Hey everyone, it's Kevin Oxner with visualproductivity.net. Right now we're gonna get into the window menu of X-7. And I've gotta tell you guys, this one, I'm gonna try and make it short, but this menu is absolutely packed with stuff. It's packed. And because the window menu pretty much opens up a new window, it opens up something every time you click on something, I'm gonna try and demonstrate most of these things, but I don't have time to get into everything. I've got a lot of individual demos of these different topics, so have a look. And if you see something you, that interests you, I probably have a demo on, all right? Let's get into these things. Now, you can see on the left-hand side, I've got the window menu. I've got an image of the window menu, and that way, as opposed to me opening up the window menu every single time, it's just there for our reference. And if you wanna get a copy of the sheet that I'm working with, this is the x 7 cheat sheet, and it's available at visualproductivity.net. All I ask in return is that you sign up for my newsletter and at least give it a chance, guys. All right. Let's go in here, and I've broken things down. There's several different, you know, there's a lot of these things. I've broken that down into four different categories as far as my personal categories. Let's talk about each of these things. Now, as far as the tools go, the properties, I'll just open up some of these quickly. And most of these window ones don't really have, you can right click a lot of times. So I'm, I can right click and get properties, I can right click and get markers. But if, um, I'll try and right click where I can, otherwise I'll probably just go back up to the menu and just start using the menu. So properties, it opens up an actual properties tab. This lets us adjust font size, the line style, all sorts of neat things. And really, you've got to go in and just play around with this kind of thing and test it out. But if you say to yourself, I don't like the look of the map, hey, go ahead, go ahead and change it then. If you don't like something, go ahead and get into the properties and change it. I'm just gonna close that. Markers. I am gonna go ahead and click on, I'm gonna click on markers in the Windows menu because I want the whole markers thing to come up. If I right click it, it just gives me uh, markers. Where's my markers? There they are. And I can choose them from here. If you want, you can click on more, but I'll just rather get the whole thing set up here for right now. With markers, I can choose priority. The default priority is always five, but if I want, I can add priorities. I can add smiley faces, flags. You can see, you know, you guys can see exactly what's on here. So there are several different markers that we can use. This is all part of the free package with XMI. Um, the next level up though is also clip art. I'm gonna close this. Let's go in here and we'll do Windows clip art. And this is a pro feature, so you would have to have XMIME Pro in order to use this. But I'll just give you an idea of what it has. If you look on the bottom, it does have several different types of clip art that you can throw in. Lots of cute little things you can add, and it just makes it that much easier for you. And there's lots of like, a cool whole Christmas package. And if you don't like some of them, you can go ahead and you can just collapse them, and there you go. So it's easy for you to fly through and check out some of these things. And then it's just more a matter of dragging and dropping in, and there we go, we got some clip art. Excellent. Let's keep cruising them. Uh, should I leave that? I'll leave that. All right, themes. Themes are kind of cool. Themes are your way of just making XMind your own. As opposed to having the same old, same old like Kevin always has, you can go in and at least modify these. The themes are great because they're pre-made. So I'm not a huge fan of, but you know, I'm going there. I recommend just spending, I don't know, half an hour, an hour going through and clicking on all these things and seeing which ones you like. So select the theme you want and then double click and that'll change the theme for the particular tab that you're on. So I've got mango selected. Let's check, double click mango and there we go. There it is. So you can go, you can, you can go through and just test, test several of these, see which ones you like, which you don't like. Now for me, I'm more into the tactile, the usefulness. I don't often spend time making things look pretty. So if you're into pretty, go for it. If not, uh, I'm gonna go back to my base and we'll keep on cruising from there. <laughs> All right, so let's close that up. So that's our tool section. Again, a lot of things, I don't have a whole lot of time to spend. Most of these are going to have their own individual tutorials. So let's get into the notes portion of this. Now I do have a lot of write-ups on all these things. I think there are, like, I know the audio notes is in the pro features, I think, but I'll make sure everything is linked up before you guys get hold of this, this cheat sheet. The notes really just mean the notes, and this is F4 that I always like talking about. But we'll, when I go ahead and click on it, I'm gonna go into window. The reason why you can click on notes this way is that it'll automatically open up that bottom section, which you can get anyway by just clicking on F4. Um, the audio notes, I guess I've got a whole section on it. Let's go over here to Pro really fast. And where is my audio notes? Right there. 
So I do have a whole write-up on this in the description of how audio notes go. Really, it lets you record audio, just exactly what it sounds like, and then we're able to take that information and, and have it saved. So I'll just play this. I don't know if it'll, how well it'll play through my speakers. Actually, I don't think it'll even play for you guys because of how I'm recording this. I, but it'll let you record and play back audio. It does what it says. And comments. Comments is linked to the comments link, I guess, in the modify menu. What this does, when I open up comments from here, I'll just I'll show you both of them. Comments from here, we'll go into window comments. It's gonna open up the bottom screen. It'll open up this bottom section. This one, I don't have any comments, but what I'll do is we'll go over here to modify, because in modify, we do talk about having notation. And so there's comments like this one. This is comment, I've got two comments on this node. So if I go in, I can actually just click on the comment and I can see the comments. If I'm on that or anywhere on this page and I go to window and then I go to comments, I'll be able to see all the comments on this entire tab, on this entire mind map page by going into that feature. So that's the benefit. That's why there's, a, there's two spots, modify and window that have com the comment section. One just opens it on the individual node, one opens it on that huge thing at the bottom of the screen. All right, let's keep on going. Organizing, organizing. The best way to show what well, Outline will do is just show you, it just gives you an outline. Okay, let's go into Window, Outline. Outline gives you an outline, like it says, of the entire workbook. So if I've, this is a fairly big workbook I've got as far as content, so you can see if you scroll down, we'll leave that for now. We'll go on to Overview. So we're gonna head over to Window, Overview. And it just gives you that bird's eye view of what you're looking at. So if you, especially if you have a larger map, it's a, you're able to scan around and just see what you're working on. Okay. The index. Let's go to Windows. Click on Index. So the index does what it says. It takes everything that you've got in your entire map and it puts things... We'll, we'll say alphabetically. It goes through and obviously they have, I guess, the dashes before the forward slash, so they've got everything worked out and you can go through. But if you're looking for something that you know hopefully you started with, you started a topic with, hopefully you can scan through and try and find what you're looking for. It's just, a, again, just a different way of organizing the information. And there are several ways you can use it alphabetically, reverse alphabetically, based on markers you put in labels you added start date and so these are these are the last three are more for if you're doing using this for project management but there's different ways you can look at things and just again trying to find information trying to sort through the information it gives you a few different alternatives the gantt chart i don't want to spend too much time doing gantt chart stuff i haven't created one in this workbook but we can go into gantt chart and i'll go to window gantt chart but what a Gantt chart does, if you're not familiar with Gantt charts, is it's used a lot in project management. And let me just, I'm just gonna see if I can do this, there we go. I'll make it a little bit bigger. You can take ideas though, the things you're working on, and you can add amounts of time. Maybe it's gonna take you, you know, a few days, a week to do this. I can take that information, I don't, but then if I know that something I'm working on is gonna, has to be, this one has to be completed before I start this one, I can move that to the end. And so it's, it's a way of aligning your information, aligning what you're working on so that it uh, everything works out. I'm just gonna make sure I delete these though because I wanna make sure, oh, I shouldn't move that so much. There we go. And we're gonna close this. There, bring it back down and we'll close that. And there we go. The Gantt chart, I got a whole interactive presentation on Gantt chart that's also one of the pro features. I call it Gantt view. There you go, and a huge tutorial. So there's tons of things. I love it. I'm just not going to show you show it today. Um, window back to window. Task info. This is something that is uh, also. I don't know if it's new, but it says it's been around for a while, I guess. But task info. As you're entering information again, this is more for when you're using it to create to do projects. It will open up a box, and it's going to show you who's doing what. So right now I'm the only person who has a name in this document, but you can show the priority levels, what has to get done, what time it has to start, how long it's gonna be. And this all ties in with the Gantt chart that I just showed you. As you build the Gantt chart, it'll add information to the task list, or if you have the t work on the task list, it'll give you, it'll add to the, um, 
to that as well. So I'm gonna take this stuff off just so that we don't have anyone linked to it. And we're gonna close that. And there we go, an inspector. Let's call the inspector. The inspector is, is almost like when you go to a website and you click on you know, show page source, it's gonna show you a bunch of information about this. So it'll give you an idea of the size of this, how many topics, I've got 1,300, almost 1,400 topics in this, the number of words in this, how many revisions that I've made to this. So that's pretty much the days I've worked on this. Last modified, it shows you all the information, plus a ton of different links that I've got in the, in the site. Uh, images. I'll let you go in and play with this a little bit and check things out. And um, yeah, we'll back out of that because I do want to keep cruising. We've got lots more to talk about. All right, other tools. Editing history is something that is really good to know. The editing history is just in case you've deleted something or you can't find something and you want to review where you've gone over time. This is how you get into it. And in the past, it used to be in the file menu and now they've moved it into the Windows section. I'm gonna go into the editing history, but this, this Windows menu, because it's actually a relatively new, I didn't do much with it in the past few years. I'm gonna pick a different menu, one file menu, this one should have something in it. Now we'll go to Window and we'll go to Editing History and hopefully we'll find a couple, there we go. So you can see, look at this, 2013, 2014. So you can see I, I updated this, but it's been a couple of years since I first started using adding information to this. So if I wanted to, I could actually go all the way back and see what I worked on back in 2013, two years ago. So that's kind of the idea that you can do is you're able to find editing history and the more editing you do. This document, I don't, I just do a lot in a short amount of time every time, but it does let you go in and, and go ahead and check out what you've done. It doesn't show everything, but every so often it'll make a new access point and you can go back and look at previous editions of what you have. So. If you've accidentally deleted something or you want to go back in time and see what your thinking was, there is a way to do it. With the search, this is a pro search, it's, you can find content in any open workbook. And you can see I've got, right now I've got two workbooks open. I have my main workbook that I always use and then I have the cheat sheet open. Generally the search, it would be a control F. That's the only search you have for the free version. It only searches the open, the currently open workbook. I have a whole tutorial on it, go check that out. But I'm not gonna go too deep into it, but that's a really cool feature and I recommend this. If you need something, if you need to find something, you open up a bunch of workbooks and you just start searching for it and you see what you've got across all your different workbooks. And it's just, ah, sometimes you find gems. It's, it's really good. The advanced filter is a tool where you can go in and this is where in other videos I've talked about making things like notes and labels and this is how you can use the, the filter will let you go in and use those tools to find different things. So we'll go into window and we'll go into advanced filter. This is, is a pro feature. By adding filters, it's going to open up a level like this, so this window, and it will show you then any of the markers we have, any of the labels, any of the tasks, the people who we've assigned tasks to if we're doing using this for project management. I don't have a whole lot of these things added on this particular site, on this particular page. Let me go into, I think, begin free features, we'll have a few things. So there's a few markers. So there we go. What this will do though is it lets me go in and I can see all the different markers, all the different labels, all the assignees we have for each particular one. It's just a cool feature and I'm, you know, I won't spend too much time on it right now, but it's definitely something I think you might want to check out. Uh, spelling, you know, I'm not going to go into spelling too much. There's a spell checker. It runs automatically if you're mistyping something. Mistyping. It just has the red underline like a lot of other Windows things has. Um, yeah, I'll leave it there for now. The black box. There we go. Black box is something that you don't really need to get into. Uh, the black box though is, let's go Windows, black box. There we go. You can see that I've got a few things that I've, a few of the different um, XMind files that I have. I've got several that are sitting in a black box. And this is more just if there's ever an issue, you can go into the black box and it's like a fail state. If something just disastrous happens to your, your mind map, hopefully the black box will be able to recover it. I still recommend you should be saving things, backing things up. But if, you, if something goes, you know, if something's catastrophic happens, at least you have the black box. Resetting the perspective will set things back. And the default setting is 120% for X, Y, and so it, just, it would just reset things back, the zoom level and all those things back to uh, what it was. I'll leave that alone for now. Uh, guys, that's it for now, though, is the Windows Mate. It's got tons of stuff in it. 
I just wanted to give you a bit of a, a high level overview of this. If you want to find out more about a particular topic, go in and watch the individual tutorial and make sure you check out the XMind 7 cheat sheet that I've got at visualproductivity.net. Hey guys, that's it for now. Uh, if you like the video, like always, go ahead and hit the like button. Uh, leave me a comment if you want to connect, if you want to talk about something, ask a question. Tell me something you liked about the Gantt chart, what you didn't like about audio notes, you know, what, whatever it is. Let's talk about the Windows menu or something else, and we'll talk soon. Again, I am Kevin Oxner with visualproductivity.net.